going to finish this, but we will stop when uh, <coughs> we can see that it's uh, viable for us to end the message tonight. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 8. This is a very, very familiar verse. And I believe that so many preachings have been preached using this uh, passage of Scripture. Okay, let's read it in unison. Ready? Read. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Father, we pray that you will bless us as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. So, as a Christian, it is very important for us to be stable. Because success can only come when there is stability in our life. When there is stability in our faith, when there is stability in our belief, when there is stability in our uh, serving the Lord, and when there is stability in our Christian life. So when a Christian becomes unstable, it is as if we are becoming like water, something that is liquid. A liquid is something that is so unstable that it only follows the mold or the container where you put it. If there is a round container, it will take the shape of a container. If there is a, uh, what, what you call a, a triangle container, it will take the shape of that container. Whatever the shape of the container is, that is going to be the shape of the water. And in Christian life, that is not good. Because as a Christian, we need to be established in the Word of God. We need to have an established faith and an established conviction. Like in the life of uh, Daniel, he said that he purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. So meaning to say, no matter what the stake will be, Daniel is not going to change his conviction. Unlike water, Daniel is solid when it comes to God. His conviction is solid. His disposition is solid. His faith is solid for the Lord. You cannot sway him. You cannot uh, make him swerve to the left or to the right. But he will go straight, serving God until the end of his life. And if we will follow the life of Daniel, we can say that he was true to his conviction because there was no hint of wavering even though he was faced by losing his own life even though he was faced of the prospect of being thrown into the den of lion he still kept his integrity and remained true to his conviction that is why success as Joshua 1 8 says will come if we are stable and established in the word of God. Amen. So on the contrary, if we are not stable and established in the word of God, then we are going to fail. So we cannot afford to be unstable in our Christian life. Our mold is not this word, but our mold is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. This is what we need to follow or our mold should be. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed. So that is our form. We should not be conformed to this word. We should not take the shape of the word. We should not take the mind of the word. We should not embrace the lust of the word. Be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So our shape, our mold must be according to the will of God. Amen. So, 
If a Christian is unstable, then he's not going to be successful. So let us look today on several things. Why or how can a Christian can become unstable and how to guard uh, our life from it so that it will not happen to us. So tonight we're going to look at several scriptures and see what makes a Christian unstable. Number one is deception. Number one, deception. Remember, Christian life is always based on truth. The Bible clearly says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. A person who knows the truth is a person who is not in error. If you are in error, then you are ignorant of the truth. And every person or every Christian that is not knowing and living the truth is a Christian that is deceived by the devil. You see, false doctrine and lies have led many Christians astray to the point where they are totally ineffective for Christ. Let us look at what happened to the Galatians, uh, Galatian Christian in Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 1. Paul says, Oh foolish! You see, you can be saved, but you can be foolish. You can be a Christian, but you can be foolish. Remember, when the Lord Jesus Christ told the story about the rich farmer, and this farmer wanted to live his life uh, by the uh, result of his bumper crop, he talked to himself and thought, that is going to be filled, filled, that is going to be fulfilled and satisfied for the rest of his life. But then God says, Thou fool, tonight thy soul shall I require of thee. You see, the word fool is almost always exclusively applied to the unbelievers. The fool had said in his heart, There is no God according to Psalms chapter 14. So you can see that the word fool is used by God most often than not to those who do not know God, to those who do not believe God, to those who do not know the word of God. But then here are Christians. Here are those who repented of their sins and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet the apostle Paul called them Oh, foolish Galatians. So we, you cannot say that I, I'm Christian, I cannot be a fool. We can be a fool. We can actually be foolish in our belief. We can actually be foolish in our disposition. Why were they foolish? He says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Who hath deceived you? Why did you allow yourself to be deceived? You see, there is a possibility that even though you are saved, you can still be deceived. And that is the work of the devil. The devil is the great deceiver. He's not going to tell us anything that is true. He may say things that may seem to be true, but they are actually false. Who would bewitch you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified, among you. So what is a foolish Christian? A foolish Christian is a Christian who knows clearly what he believes and yet allow himself to be deceived by the enemy. How can that happen? It will happen because we are not meditating enough and studying enough the word of God. So that's why if you are not into the word of God, then you can easily be deceived by the enemy because our only weapon, the only weapon that we can use, the only offensive weapon that we have is the sword of the Spirit, and the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. So if we do not know the Word of God, then we can easily be deceived. And if you are deceived, then you're unstable in the faith, and if you're unstable in the faith, then you will be ineffective. That's why you listen to the Word of God. Don't listen to false teachers Sometimes don't even listen to yourself. Why? Because yourself can deceive you. 
You may tell yourself, oh, I cannot give this to the Lord because I need this. If that belongs to God, give it to the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. You see, that is what we need to understand. Because once we make decisions out of emotion, then we will be clouded from the truth. Emotion can get so high that it will make us move and do something that we will regret later. Ilan na ba yung mga dahil sa na emotion na buntis ng walang asawa? Ah. Eh hindi eh, talaga po matindi tibok ng puso ko eh. Talaga naman natin tibok ang puso. Sabi ng awit, kapag tumibok ang puso, abay pag di tumibok yan, di patay ka. Natibok talaga yan. Pero wag ka magpadala dun sa emosyon. Amen? And sometimes you decide according to circumstances. You see, Christians, as Christians, we live above circumstances and never under circumstances. You see, sometimes you are so uh, fond of something and then that something comes to you, but that something or part of that something belongs to another and because you are fond of that something, you tend to hold it for yourself and not to give the portion that belongs to another. So that is, a, that is a, this, making decision because of circumstances or sometimes because of the... Uh, uh, the things that are going in our way. So we need to know the Word of God so that we will be guided by the truth on how to make a decision. Amen. You see, sometimes when you are getting old and you're still single, then you are being forced to make a decision because of fear. Baka maiwan ako ng last trip. Oh, di ba? So, ang sabi mo, kahit sino na lang. Kasi hindi na ako pwedeng maging maselan. Matanda na ako. Oh. Eh kaya ka tumanda, sabi mo. Kasi nagpumipili talaga ako ng spiritual, wala ako nakita. Tapos nagpakatanda ka dahil sa pinipili mo yung spiritual. Nung tumanda ka, karna lang na dali mo. So hindi dapat ganoon. You must become true to the conviction that was given to you by the Word of God. The Word of God is very clear. Thou shalt not allow thyself to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So no matter what happened, you will never entertain anything that, it, that is against the Word of God. So don't be foolish. Know the Word of God and you will have wisdom. Amen. Because the Word of God always gives wisdom. The entrance of thy Word Give it light, it give it understanding unto the simple. And then look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 14. The Bible says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see, there are Christians who are so foolish that they wanted to be entertained in the church. And therefore, they are waiting for preachers who will tickle their fancy. They're waiting for preachers who will make them laugh every time. They're waiting for preachers who will make them feel good. And if you are like that, then the devil will supply you people that will lie in order to deceive you by using their craftiness and their uh, being uh, cunning when it comes to the word of God. And then if you are like that, then you are not going to become stable because you are not going to look in the word of God, but you are going to look to the preacher and therefore you will have a favorite preacher instead of listening to the word of God. You see? That's why it is very important that we should be established, that we will not be uh, deceived. By these people. You see, sometimes there are Christians that I do not understand who can even be swayed or believe in what Rick Warren is teaching. I, I cannot understand that there are Christians 
who will even believe what a Joel Austin is teaching. It's not in grow. When it is very, very clear that these people are teaching something that is not according to the Word of God. And we cannot even know if these people are really saved. Why? Because they cannot preach against sin. You see, Joel Austin will never tell you that a practicing homosexual will go to hell. He will tell us it is God's job, not my job. So what are you preaching? You're not preaching the Word of God. Because the Word of God is very uh, plain and very simple. The, the Word of God says, For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So no matter who you are or what you are, you're a sinner and without repenting and accepting Jesus, you will die and you will go to hell. You may be a pastor, you may be a priest, you may be a bishop, you may be a pope, you may be a minister, it doesn't matter who you are. If you are not saved, then you're not going to hell. But you say, Pastor, how can you say that? These people are performing miracles. These people are healing sick people. These people are performing things for the glory of God. They're even casting out evil spirit. So how can you say that? Because the Lord Jesus Christ said that. Look at Matthew 7. Matthew 7, I believe, verse number... Uh, Twenty-one. You see, if I say that and I preach that, people will get angry at me. Little did they know that it was the Lord Jesus Christ who said that. That everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Panginoon, nangaral kami ah. And in thy name of cast out devils. Nagpalis kami ng mga demonyo sa katawan ng tao. And in thy name, done many wonderful works. Guma kami ng maraming kamanghamang ang mga bagay, mga milagro, Panginoon, sa pangalan mo. And you know what will be the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why? Because your 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 Life, your good work is not a proof that you are saved. What will make you saved is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are saved, then you're going to represent the Lord Jesus Christ according to the Word of God. Amen? Pero yung mga yan, pagdating sa pangihingi ng pera, walang tigil, hindi nahihiya. Pero pag ipinangaral ang kasalanan, nahihiya. Doon nga sa church si Joe Willustin, para lang makapag-attend ka, $20 yata ang babayaran mo eh. Hmm. Sipin mo yun. Asa na yung sinabi ng Panginoon? Freely ye receive. Freely give. Hindi na. Why? Sayang yung yung smile na ganun eh. Wala, yung aking kasi walang panamaharon sa smile niya eh. Yung aking ising aso eh. But we should not be like children. Unstable. Why? Because we are not deep into the Word of God. We are not skillful in using the Word of God. Why? We know more about Facebook. We know more about social media than the Word of God. I'm not saying that these things are wrong. But our priority must always be the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we need the word of God for our spiritual health and well-being. Without the word of God, then we cannot survive this world that we are in. Because Satan is the God of this world. He is the prince of the power of the air, and we have no match for Satan. The only match that we have is the one who is greater that is in us than he that is in the world, and we can only know that and appropriate that if we know the word of God. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, 3 to 4. Paul is fearful about his brethren at Corinth. He said, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. 
Natatakot ako kaya niya kung paano nadaya si Eva ng, ng ahas dahil sa kanyang pagiging yung satel, yung, yung ma, parang pagkapang tuso, something like that. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. That's why if you know what you receive, then you will know if what is being presented to you is different. Amen? Amen? Why? Because you know the truth. If you know the truth, then you will know if something is not the truth because truth is always absolute. Do you know one plus one equals two? Do you know that, Chuchut? Do you know that, Francis? One plus one equals two. That is absolute. Amen? There is no other truth. But that truth, if somebody will tell you one plus one equals eleven, you know it's not the truth. Why? Because you know the truth. If they give you any other number except two, then it is not the truth anymore. That is why a Christian must know the truth, must hold on to the truth, must live the truth, so that if false will come in, then he knows. And he will not be deceived. Like Eve. Eve knew. Listen, Eve knew that he, she should not eat of the fruit of the tree. She knows that very well. The command is very clear of all the trees. Of the garden thou mayest eat, but of the tree in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou mayest not eat. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. She knows it, right? But she didn't keep the truth in her heart. She did not hold on to the truth. So when a subtle ser serpent approached her and promised her heaven, then she ate of the fruit of that tree. And the same thing with us. Listen, listen to me very carefully. Well, pastor, I want excitement because sometimes what we're doing is boring. Well, the truth has no variety. What can we do about it? Do you want me to tell you that this is true today and the truth for tomorrow is different and the truth uh, uh, the day after that will be different so that we will have variety? So we're not holding the truth anymore. We are going now to our emotion and to our own understanding just to make us happy just to satisfy us so that we will continue. Listen to me. If that is your attitude, you do not have the Holy Spirit in your heart. Because the Holy Spirit will only beat for what is the truth. You know what the Bible, what Jesus Christ says? He will only say what he heard of me. Nothing more. Nothing less. Because the truth is something that is absolute. Number two, not only deception, but incomplete development. Incomplete development or spiritual immaturity. A person who is spiritually immature is ignorant of the Word of God. And if you are ignorant of the Word of God, as I've said a while ago, it will create instability, not only to the members, but even pastors are subject to this. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. One among the ideals given that a pastor should possess. 1 Timothy 3.6 Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So what is one ideal of a pastor or a bishop? He must not be a novice or new or immature. Why? An immature person 
when he receives success, then he will be lifted up with his pride. And will even think that whatsoever achievement there may be, it is because of him, not because of God. That's why, that is why God is very careful in using people. He's very careful in using so many people. Remember uh, the Gideon's 300, they're going to face thousands and thousands of enemy. They are, I, I believe, uh, uh, at the beginning, 20 or 10,000, but God reduced it to 300. Why? So that no matter what happened, if there is a victory, they will know it is because of God, not because of them. That's why the Bible says, not many noble, not many great, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That's what we need to understand. That is how God works. That is why if we are going to be immature, God cannot use us. And it is so sad to say that because of the because they water down God's calling today. So we have so many immature pastors standing behind the pulpit nowadays. Yung bang sobrang pikon. Matanong lang ng member, kinu-question mo authority ko? Sino pastor dito? Parang hindi niya alam na siya. Tinanong pa sa miyembro. Immature. Pag mababa offering, discourage. Pag mataas ang offering, tuwan-tuwa. Pag birthday niya, hindi narigaluhan ng church, lungkot na lungkot, hindi ako mahal ng simbahan. Hindi man lang ako nirigaluhan ng kotse. Samantalang birthday ko, nakaraan ng Pastor's Appreciation Month buong October, wala man lang bumati sa akin. Discouraged na siya. Ako nga, walang bumati sa akin, hindi man ako discouraged eh. Bakit? Hindi naman kasi natin ine-emphasize ang Pastor's Pastor Sunday. Hindi mo natin ine-emphasize ang Pastor's Appreciation Day, Pastor's Appreciation Month. Pastor, bakit masama ba yun? Sa tingin ko, sumasama eh. Kasi nag expect tayo eh. Tandaan natin, we should not be people that are self-entitled. Because what we have is only by the grace of God. And the grace of God is unmerited favor from the Lord given to us. We do not deserve it and yet God gave it to us. Gave it to us. How can we demand? Oh. Ba't ka magdi-demand? Pag hindi nyo in-increase ang support ko, mag-aanap ako ng ibang church. How can you demand? Oh. Sino ba tumawag sa'yo? Ang Diyos. Oh. Kung di ka mo masuportahan ng church, yung bang support ang dahil lang, ka nag pastor Eh, pastor, kaya naman ng church. O yung ibang usapan na yun, pagkaya ng church, hindi ka sinusuportahan, may problema ang church. And that is the time that you teach them, if they will not learn, then you go. And find the church who will obey the, the word of God. Pero pandemic na. Wala nang trabaho mga tao. Sabi ng isang pastor, kailangan ko ng 200,000 sa birthday ko. Pandemic yan ha. Walang trabaho para sa missions conference natin at saka handa ko na rin sa birthday ko. Wala nang pera tao. Pag hindi ka pa, sabi, naalala ko nga si Soriano nung, nung mga problema, dalawang milyon lang ang kailangan ko. Hindi niya po maibigay. Dalawang daang miyembro lang yun na Dalawang libong miyembro lang na tigi isang libo. Hindi niyo po maibigay sa akin. Pagkakait niyo po ba yun? Pero man ang konsensya pa. Hindi ganun. Amen? Pag nasa kawain ka ng Panginoon, you depend on God. And if God is a God who is not, who will never forget, who is not unfaithful to forget your works and your labor of love, then you can hold on to His promise that my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why will you worry if God is your employer? Amen? O kung siya ang employer mo, mag-worry ka. Pero kapag ka ang Diyos ang employer mo, huwag ka mag-worry. Amen? Because He knows what to do. Number three, 
we will only uh, do three, uh, four or five of uh, this, uh, I think these are 18, but uh, we will only do some. And I will just continue some other day. And then shallowness. Shallowness or spiritual shallowness. When a person is not grounded in the truth of the scripture and his relationship with Jesus, they can easily be swayed. Madali. Yung para kang kung saan dali ng agos, kung saan dali ng alon, doon ka pupunta. Look at Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. Ito, pinag-aralan natin ito. No? Mahabang pag-aaral ito eh. Kaya alam na ninyo. Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. You see what the Apostle Paul is telling them, or the author of Hebrews? There are so many things that I want to tell you. Things that will benefit you. But I cannot say it. Because you are dull of hearing. You do not know how to listen. You do not know, you, you, do, you do not have the right kind of ear to, ear to hear the word of God. Verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You know, Paul is saying, you have been a Christian for a long time. In that time alone, you should have been teaching like me. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. But no, I need to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such a that have need of milk and not of strong meat, you regress and you became a babe. Instead of growing, you know, children are cute. Look at him, look at Jay, look at LJ. Uh, they are really cute. They are good to look at. And even though they cannot really walk straight, some, some of them cannot even stand up, it's okay with us. We will carry them. We will do everything to, to uh, uh, protect them, to help them grow. But it's a different story when you're already 20 years old and you want to be carried. Gusto mo, ginaganong-ganon ka pa, 20 years old ka na. Ang dapat sa'yo, hagis na ganon, tapos pa na ganon. Why? Eh, matanda ka na eh, hindi ka pa lumalakad. Ang tanda mo na hanggang ngayon. Tinuturo, ang tagal mo ng kristyano hanggang ngayon. Itinuturo pa rin sa'yo, pambata. Ang tanda mo na at sabi pa rin sa'yo, kuchik, 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 aning, 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 natutuwa ka ng ganun. Hindi ka mapagsabihan. Hindi ka natututo. Why? Mababaw, shallow. Hindi lumalim. Why? Because you are not listening to the Word of God. You are not studying the Word of God. You are not growing. And you became so unskillful that you are a babe. For everyone that you sell milk is unskillful in the Word of Righteousness. For he is a babe. Bata. Shallow. Verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, what do you mean? Practice your faith. Exercise your faith. Apply your faith. Use your faith. It will become strong. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. They know what is good. They know what is evil. They know what is right and what is wrong. And they know what to do. But the child does not know what to do. Why? Because they're shallow. Why? Because they're not studying the word of God. Number four, double-mindedness. A person who tries to serve the Lord and the word will be unstable. Amen? That's why you make up your mind. Decide whom you're going to serve. Look at James 1, 6 to 8. Mm, but uh, strong meat sa Hebrews pa yan. Mm, ito si James 1, 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. That's why when you doubt, do not even ask God. 
Because that is an insult to His power. Naku, kaya kaya akong bigyan ng Diyos ng ganito? E ba't humingi ka pa sa Diyos? Kung yung ang kalula mo iniligtas sa impyerno, yan lang kailangan mo pa, hindi bibigyan ng Diyos. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave. See? He that wavereth is like a wave. Of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Talaga, ah, ah, kung saan yung hangin, dun yan. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. See? If you doubt, God will not answer your prayer. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's why conviction is important. Because it will make us stable. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. This is very clear. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Let me just illustrate the truth of this and we will end here. There is a man in America during the civil war. He wanted to be neutral. He do not want to be he do not want to be just with the confederate but he also wants to be with the union. So what he did is that he wore the gray jacket of the confederate and he wore the blue trousers of the union. So he is serving both sides. But then there was a an encounter where he was caught in the middle and then he's shouting hey I am neutral I am neutral but the, but the uh, sniper of the confederate saw his gray jacket and they aimed at him to kill him because he's an enemy while the union saw his blue trousers and they also aimed at him to shoot him. And true enough, they all shoot him, and he was riddled with bullets, and he died in that war. Why? Because he tried to serve two masters. You cannot do it. If you serve God, you serve God. If you do not serve God, then you're serving the devil. You cannot have the best of both worlds. But if you're going to choose the right master, then you can never go wrong. But if you will choose the wrong master, then you can never go right. So let us be stable. Let us try to be established in the Word of God. Because if the Word of God will be firmly established in our hearts, then God can guide us. Because the Bible says that that. God is guiding every steps of a righteous man, an established man, and he will direct our path. And we can be assured of that if we will only be stable. And if we will do that, the Bible says, thou shalt have good success as we make the word of God a mighty part of our life. Shall we stand the place?